Hi, it's Katrina. The Frozen Dragon. Scientists in Canada announced the discovery of a frozen dragon hidden in the ice. While not exactly a dragon from ancient mythology, it has been identified as a new genus of pterosaur, which was a flying reptile that had a wingspan of over 16 feet and possibly even up to 33 feet. Pterosaurs were the first vertebrates that ever soared through the sky. What has confused scientists for a long time is just why they got so large. Some of these animals managed to reach incredible heights. According to Mike Habib from the University of Southern California, this dragon lived at a time when Western Canada was way warmer than it is today during the Cretaceous period, 76 million years ago. This flying beast would have flown over the heads of dinosaurs, and scientists have called it the Cryodracon Boreas, which means frozen dragon of the north winds. This specific animal died millions of years ago and its bones sunk into the earth. Then, when North America was frozen during the last ice age, its fossil got trapped. But with rising temperatures and thawing ice, paleontologists were finally able to dig it up. The partial skeleton was dug out of the ice from Canada's Dinosaur Provincial Park in 1992. But at first, everyone thought it belonged to a pterosaur called Quetzalcoatlus northropi. The Quetzalcoatlus had a wingspan of over 30 feet and was taller than a giraffe. It has taken all these years to finally identify this fossil as something different and give it its own name, since most discoveries have been partial skeletons, which makes it hard to know if what you have is something new or not. Closer analysis showed that some of the bones had teeth marks from some type of velociraptor. There were also holes in the neck, which once held air sacs that would help them to fly. The holes help scientists tell the different species apart. The search is now on to find more fossils to learn more about these creatures, like just how they were able to fly since they got so big. Arctic Shipwreck Archaeologists were shocked after making the haunting discovery of a ship lost during one of the most devastating expeditions of all time. The ship had the foreboding name of the HMS Terror, and it was one of two that went missing during the Franklin Expedition of 1845. Sir John Franklin was trying to find the Northwest Passage when he got stuck in the ice. This was 170 years ago, and every last crew member suffered a miserable end in the Arctic wilderness. Between the HMS Terror and the HMS Erebus, 133 men lost their lives when they abandoned the vessels that got stuck in the ice and tried venturing back to civilization. Many died from malnourishment and starvation. Others died from the frigid cold, and a lot of survivors near the end are believed to have eaten each other. All these years later, in 2016, the ship was finally found thanks to remotely operated vehicles run by Parks Canada archaeologists. An Inuit hunter and member of the armed forces had seen a pole sticking out of the ice many years before, and he took a picture, but he dropped the camera so he didn't have any proof. He didn't mention it to the team until seven years later, when he was part of an expedition to find it again. It was found underwater off the coast of King William Island in the far north. Divers went down to the wreckage and stuck the ROVs through openings so they could get footage of the interior of the ship. They explored 20 cabins and compartments, finding dinner plates, beds and desks, and everything left behind as if the ship had sunk just yesterday. Historians and archaeologists are trying to figure out just what may have happened to the crew and what led up to the decision to leave the ships. Thanks to the cold waters, the ship is so well preserved that it looks like over time it may reveal pieces to the puzzle. The ship will not be brought to the surface though due to the extreme cold and harsh conditions. Frozen Soldiers Skiers at a small resort town in the Italian Alps got the shock of a lifetime when they found human remains coming out of the ice. Melting glaciers in Italy are revealing the bodies of fallen soldiers who lost their lives in World War I. Perhaps the most haunting are two missing Austrian soldiers, mummified by the ice. They were battling high up in the mountains when they died and were covered over by the elements where they remained frozen for almost 100 years before the glacier began to melt revealing their bodies for the first time in just about a century. The Austrian soldiers were only teenagers when they set out for war. They were found in remarkably good condition because of the ice that had entombed them for so long, with blonde hair, blue eyes, and each one with a bullet through the skull. According to Franco Nicholas of the Archaeological Heritage Office, the boys probably emerged from the ice in the same condition that they went into it. But just what kind of battle was going on up in the icy mountains for this to happen? It's known today as the White War, and it was the scene of a deadly battle in the beginning of the First World War in which Italians and Austrians fought each other and the bitter temperatures in the Alps. 
For these two soldiers, it would be the last battle they ever fought, and it's likely their families never learned what happened to them. Creature brought back to life. In what sounds like science fiction, scientists have brought an ancient creature back to life. Scientists took a tiny critter that had been frozen in ice for 24,000 years and slowly warmed it up until it revived. It's known as the Betaloid rotifer, and it has a reputation in the scientific community for being a hardy animal, clearly. This multicellular animal is almost like a worm that doesn't have a problem with being frozen for prolonged periods of time. There are other animals on Earth that freeze themselves briefly during the coldest seasons, such as certain frogs, but scientists have always wondered just how long a creature can remain frozen before it no longer wakes up. As it turns out, at least 24,000 years. These rotifers usually live in the water, but as temperatures dropped, the creature ended up frozen in the soil. Before scientists reanimated the tiny worm, they were sure to take some serious precautions. It's kind of scary to think what the consequences might be when you are thawing something that has been frozen for so long, as well as reviving a creature that technically should probably be dead. Scientists worry that the critter may have been carrying some sort of disease that has never before been seen by human beings. If a disease were to be unleashed from an animal that lived in a time before people, an outbreak could occur that could potentially destroy all human life. Or at least there is the possibility that it could lead to a catastrophic chain of events we can't even imagine. The researchers took extra precautions to ensure that outbreaks don't occur and contained the tiny worm until it died. What do you think about reviving ancient critters? Amazing or terrifying? Let me know in the comments below. Crashed UFO Melting ice in Antarctica may have just revealed a crashed UFO. A popular YouTuber claims that he discovered the UFO while using Google Earth. Based on the satellite images from the alleged crash site, there is a disk about 60 feet wide sticking out from the ground, half covered in snow and ice. It doesn't appear to be any kind of natural structure. Judging by its smooth, circular contours, rumors are flying it was crafted by some kind of higher intelligence. Conspiracy theorists on the internet are raving that this is the proof everyone has been waiting for that aliens have indeed been to our planet. They apparently crashed this spacecraft thousands of years ago in Antarctica, and as the years went by, this spacecraft was covered in ice. But not everyone is convinced. Some claim the image merely shows a lake, and that it has been manipulated to create the optical illusion of a spaceship. Either way, something strange has definitely been uncovered in Antarctica. The only way to find out the truth of this mysterious object is for someone to actually go, or wait for more ice to melt and see what's going on over there. Dinosaur Blood Cells Susanna Maidment and her team at the Imperial College London were studying bone fossilization by cutting small fragments out of fossils to analyze them when they accidentally found dinosaur blood. This is an incredible discovery and could be the first step into creating a real-life Jurassic Park. The scientists found blood-like cells from a 75-million-year-old dinosaur that had previously been frozen under the ground. This is 10 million years before the T-Rex ever existed. Right now, the scientists have yet to find any usable DNA in the blood cells, but that doesn't mean that they're worthless. Blood cells can still tell a lot about an animal. For example, the size of the cells themselves can give clues as to the metabolism of the creature. The discovery is also exciting because until now, Soft flesh tissue was only ever found in extremely rare fossils from a very specific environment, such as frozen in ice, or an extremely dry place. But these bones were just regular fossils. Thanks to Maidment, scientists are realizing they may actually be able to access more of these types of cells by slicing open bones and looking deep into the fossilized tissue of ancient beasts. Ice 19 Earlier this year, scientists announced the discovery of the 19th form of water ice. Called Ice 19, it is extremely rare, formed at ultra-low temperatures and ultra-high pressures. Researchers say Ice 19 only exists in laboratory experiments, but they also say it could help us understand more about what's going on deep inside of the Earth's mantle and on other planets and moons in the solar system that are significantly colder than Earth. Naming a new type of ice is not a simple process. It must have a completely unique crystal structure. Scientists also need to identify the simplest repeating structure of the ice, where all the atoms are inside of that structure, and what the symmetry of the structure is. 
Most people are familiar with a variety of six-sided snowflakes, and if you've seen them under a microscope, they are very beautiful. But the six-sided ice crystal is just one of many forms of ice. It all depends on the oxygen and hydrogen atoms and the density and position. Ice 19 only has four sides and can only be created in a setting of minus 247 degrees Fahrenheit. While it's not common on Earth, it is a normal temperature on other planets. Understanding ice crystals helps to understand how glaciers flow and the behavior of the ice mantle or ice core of different things like Uranus and Neptune and Jupiter's moons of ice. Now the race is on to find Ice 20. Ancient Lion Cubs A pair of cave lion cubs found frozen in the ice of Siberia were found almost perfectly preserved, with their fur, teeth, and soft pads of their paws still intact. Since they were found near each other, at first, everyone thought the cubs died together 44,000 years ago. They looked so similar and were so close together they must be related. But after extensive research, scientists have concluded they died roughly 20,000 years apart. Scientists believe both were abandoned by their mothers for unknown reasons. The youngest cub, nicknamed Sparta, most likely died from hunger 26,000 years ago. Her body was found in the most extreme stage of starvation, completely robbed of its fat. Nearby was the other cave lion cub named Boris, who was just two or three weeks old when he died, possibly crushed by rocks when his cave den fell in. Dr. Albert Protopopov, who worked closely with the remains, said they found internal injuries which looked like they were caused by an impact. These little cubs have provided us with so much information about the past. Genetic analysis has finally proven that Ice Age cave lions are distinct from modern lions and are not the same species. Scientists are now hoping to bring the extinct cave lion back to life using the DNA from these small cubs. Ancient Viking Box In Norway, hundreds of ancient artifacts have been revealed thanks to melting glacial ice high up in a mountain passageway. One of these items stands out above the rest because it was a wooden box with its lid still sealed in place. And you know, who can resist the call of a mystery box? Archaeologists opened it for the first time since it was lost in the ice, finally revealing its curious contents. What do you think was inside? Let me know in the comments below! Inside the box, researchers discovered beeswax. That's it! There wasn't any gold, no jewelry, and no magical weapons. It was just an ordinary beeswax candle. But imagine how important a candle would be back in the day when there was no electricity. To understand more about this mysterious relic and why the box only contained a single candle instead of treasure, we need to look back 1,200 years. The mountains in which the artifact was discovered were used by ancient Vikings as a passage across Norway. The passage continued to be used long after the Vikings had gone, so this box didn't actually belong to a Viking. It has been dated to about 546 years old, about 400 years after the Viking Age ended. The candle probably wasn't used as a light source on the mission through the mountains. Instead, it was probably being transported from a seasonal farm to somewhere it could be sold. 500 years ago, beeswax candles were precious objects worth a small fortune. Lost Whiskey Researchers in Antarctica have made a rather unique discovery of treasure buried beneath the ice. In 1907, Sir Ernest Shackleton led a series of expeditions into Antarctica. The Nimrod expedition found Mr. Shackleton and his party exploring further than anyone else in the direction of the South Pole. His final expedition was in 1921, but it didn't go so well. Once Mr. Shackleton returned from the icy wasteland to the main base, he had a heart attack and died. He was buried there in Antarctica. 100 years later, researchers uncovered two bottles of perfectly preserved McKinley whiskey that had been hiding in the ice. At first, Archaeologists were terrified to take the whiskey bottles out because they might accidentally damage them. Researchers waited years to get proper tools delivered to the site so they could expertly extract the whiskey. Then the whiskey was defrosted over around two weeks. They were left with whiskey bottled in 1898 that was then frozen when the bottles were only 15 years old. The bottles had almost certainly been brought along by Sir Ernest Shackleton on one of his expeditions and then lost. One of the really cool things is that the original recipe for the whiskey was lost. However, the distiller that now owns the brand of whiskey paid a private jet to get the bottles from Antarctica to New Zealand, then to Scotland, where they could analyze them. Using a sample drawn from a syringe stabbed through one of the corks, 
the distillery was able to recreate 50,000 limited edition bottles. Georgia Guidestones Located at the highest point in Elbert County, Georgia, the Georgia Guidestones are a series of six granite tablets arranged in the shape of a star. On the stones are ten instructions. Nobody knows who put them there, how to interpret the stones, or what to do with them. In 1979, a man wishing to conceal his identity hired a local granite finishing company to build a monument containing instructions for the re-establishment of society. Per the terms of a legal agreement, all of the structure's plans were to be destroyed upon its completion. This strange man, who went by the pseudonym R.C. Christian and had seemingly limitless money for the project, insisted on all information regarding his identity being strictly withheld from the public. Conspiracy theories about who he was abound, including rumors of the New World Order or Satanists being behind the Guidestones. These far-flung ideas have led to extreme vandalism, but have not brought anyone closer to identify who made the monument. The stories are engraved with a collection of rules that their anonymous commissioner believes humanity needs to follow in order to restore humanity in the aftermath of the apocalypse. A short message graces the top of the monument in four ancient languages – Greek, Babylonian cuneiform, Sanskrit, and Egyptian hieroglyphics. The rules themselves are written in eight languages, including English, Spanish, Swahili, Hindi, Hebrew, Arabic, Chinese, and Russian. Included among the ten guidelines are rules such as balance personal rights with social duties, be not a cancer on the earth, leave room for nature, and avoid petty laws and useless officials. Perhaps the most controversial statement is maintain humanity under 500 million in perpetual balance with nature. Even today, all that we know about the anonymous sponsor is that they are, according to a statement on the monument itself, a small group of Americans who seek the age of reason. Many people hate the stones and fear that they are rules for the new world order. In any case, there is an entire team of people trying to figure out what the mysterious stones are for. The Pyramids of Meroe The Pyramids of Meroe are even more mysterious than the Great Pyramids found throughout Egypt. Further south, in the sandy desert of eastern Sudan, there are over 200 ancient pyramids along the banks of the Nile River. There are actually more pyramids in Sudan than Egypt. The pyramids here are much smaller, with narrow bases and steep angles on the sides, but they are just as intriguing. Most of them were built as tombs for the kings and queens who ruled the area between 2700 and 2300 years ago, during the Kingdom of Kush, which was part of Nubia. Very little is known about these ancient people or their mostly forgotten monuments. Three Kushite kingdoms dominated Nubia for over 3,000 years. At the time of their construction, the city of Meroe was the capital of the Kush kingdom. You wouldn't believe it now by looking at the deserted landscape, the broken pyramids, and the lack of civilization. But back in 650 BC, this was a bustling city and a prosperous area that even beat back a Roman invasion. Nubians were quite wealthy and traded gold, ivory, ebony, and animals with a huge network that extended to the south and to the Mediterranean in the north. The Nubians and the Egyptians were constantly at odds, and the Egyptians conquered Kush during the New Kingdom era. The Kushites and Egyptians shared many cultural connections and worshipped the sun god Amun. As the New Kingdom ended, the Kushites rose and began using the traditional pharaonic headdress. Art and architecture from the time had many overlapping similarities. The city of Meroe thrived for centuries with its own royalty, trading systems, and alphabet and language. However, it slowly fell to raids and attacks, and then once the Romans took over Egypt, it was the beginning of the end. However, it was completely abandoned for unknown and mysterious reasons. The hieroglyphics left over by the Nubians have still never been deciphered, leaving their history a mystery. But even after the city fell and the kingdom of Nubia was mostly dead, the pyramids stood strong. That was until the 1880s, when an Italian explorer named Giuseppe Ferlini started searching for gold and began to smash them one by one. It's actually a miracle that some are still standing, even after thousands of years. The Lycian Rock Tombs The Lycian Rock Tombs in Turkey are carved into the side of a mountain. On the outside, they appear to be imposing entrances to sacred temples hidden deep within the heart of the mountain. But instead, the entrances lead to tombs from the ancient Lycian culture, a people who once dominated the area. 
The Lycians believed that when a person died, they were carried to the afterlife by a mythical winged monster. To allow the winged monster to reach them more easily, they often buried their dead in places quite high up. This meant mountains and on the sides of cliffs. Some of the oldest tombs in the area are simply unmarked holes dug into the rock hundreds of feet above the ground below. The Lycian tombs located in the old city of Fetille are significantly more impressive on the outside than on the inside. The entranceways are megalithic, with huge doors that look like they were made for giants. But beyond the doors, there is nothing but empty chambers cut into the rock. Because the tombs were so grand and easily visible, they were looted hundreds of years ago. By the time modern archaeology became a thing, all the treasures and bodies and whatever else was buried here had already been stolen, leaving a huge mystery of what the Lycian funerary rituals might have been like. Hoya Bashu Forest there is no forest in the world more mysterious or more frightening than Oyabashu Forest in Romania, where warped trees and skeletal figures can be seen at all hours of the day in the perpetual darkness of the woods. Romania already has a reputation for being one of the most haunted places in Europe. People here have witnessed figures dancing in the dark, the shapes of hands reaching out from between the trees, and specters moving from bush to bush. The atmosphere is just as spooky even when there aren't ghosts roaming around. It's eerily quiet, then suddenly there are footsteps from an unseen figure coming from everywhere at once. It's no wonder that Hoya Baishu is considered the most haunted forest in the world. But the forest here is more than just haunted. Some call it the Bermuda Triangle of Romania because people and things have been known to go missing in the area. Local legend states that a young girl vanished into the forest and then reappeared five years later, but she didn't remember where she'd been. And there's more stories of lost time, vanishing shepherds, supernatural occurrences, and even alien encounters. However, it's not all doom and gloom inside the mysterious forest. Before the sun goes down, it can be a pleasant natural area with plenty of trails for biking and hiking. Just be sure you leave before night falls, or you may be stuck inside the woods forever. Moraki Boulders The Moraki Boulders in New Zealand can be found at the Ko Kohe Beach, making it one of the most mysterious beaches in the world. The boulders along the coastline here are like stone planets dropped into the sand. All of them look perfectly symmetrical, giving the beach an oddly alien appearance, as though you've just landed on another planet. Some of the boulders are even embedded in the surrounding cliffs, looking like stuck cannonballs. According to the local Maori legends, the boulders have to do with how humans arrived on the island. When the original inhabitants of the island fled the mythical land of Hawaiki, which yes, sounds a lot like Hawaii, in their giant canoe, they were hit by a storm and they crashed into New Zealand. The hull of their canoe then became a reef, while their cargo was turned into stone spheres. Those stone spheres can still be found all over the beach today. In the science world, there is of course a different explanation. Scientists say the boulders are actually concretions which formed 60 million years ago from marine sediments. Each giant boulder began as something small like a shell or a fishbone, and as sedimentary particles slowly built up around the central object, the perfectly symmetrical orb of calcite and minerals became thicker and thicker until the Meraki boulders turned into the big rocks that we see today. I want to give a big shout out to Kevadonis and Waschent, who has been around since practically the beginning. We wouldn't be here without you. If you are new here, be sure to hit that subscribe button before you go and join the Origins Explained family. The Skirid Mountain Inn The Skirid Mountain Inn is one of the oldest and most mysterious pubs in all of Wales, with at least 900 years of history. But this isn't any ordinary history. The Skirid Mountain Inn has a long and dark past of executions, witchcraft, and hauntings. The first mention of the pub came from documents in the year 1110. It was a place of entertainment for kings from both Wales and England, and some even say the pub was the very place where the Welsh ruler Owain Glyndor started the revolt against Henry IV in England. The pub was a place of sanctuary for dying and wounded soldiers during wartime. In the 17th century, part of the inn was used as a court, and at least 180 prisoners were sentenced to death there. Often the execution would take place inside the dark and spooky inn, usually at the top of the staircase. Today, there is no shortage of paranormal activity detected inside the Skirid Mountain Inn. Staff and visitors alike have reported hearing footsteps and ghostly laughter, experiencing dramatic drops in temperature, 
and witnessing scary shadows wandering up the stairs and through the corridors. One of the weirdest things that people still experience to this day is the strange perfume that seems to come from nowhere and is often accompanied by the faint swish of a woman's dress. Point Pleasant There is nothing ordinary about Point Pleasant, West Virginia. It's one of the most mysterious towns anywhere in the United States. The history of horror began in November of 1966, when five men who were digging graves witnessed something terrifying. The diggers said they saw a humanoid beast flying very low over a nearby patch of trees. Nobody believed them, and the story was seen as nonsense. But just days later, two couples told the police that they also saw a bizarre creature flying low overhead while they were driving home. The creature had red glowing eyes and wings at least 10 feet from tip to tip. The creature followed their vehicle as they wound down the spooky West Virginia back roads. But when they pulled into town, the monster was gone. Here's where Point Pleasant gets even more mysterious. The creature was seen by numerous locals over the next handful of weeks, all of them describing the beast pretty much the same. People started calling it the Mothman due to its terrible likeness to a large moth with glowing red eyes. Then it was seen one last time on December 15, 1967. The beast was perched on the Silver Bridge. Just moments later, the bridge collapsed and 46 people were killed. Ever since, the accident has been directly connected to this mysterious monster, which was never seen again. Aurora Cemetery The Aurora Cemetery in Texas could very well hold the most important grave in the entire world. The mm. first thing you might notice on a visit to the mysterious cemetery is the plaque outside mentioning the grave of a spaceship pilot. If that seems unusual, that's because it is. But newspapers from the time reported that in April of 1897, an alien aircraft allegedly smashed into a windmill, was ripped to pieces, and its occupant was flung to the ground. The locals buried the alien corpse at the cemetery and made the plaque so future generations would know what happened. At this point, you're probably wondering if there's any proof of this. The answer is no. Roadside America reports that everyone agrees that the tombstone, if there ever was one, is gone now, and so there's nothing to see here. Scientists in 1972 tried to dig the grave up, but were blocked by the cemetery association under the rule that exhumations are only able to be done when authorized by the next of kin. Considering this is a space alien or a pilot who fell from the sky, there wasn't exactly an uncle or a third cousin around to give permission. Unfortunately, it's not even clear where in the cemetery the alien was buried. Something must have happened long before the story gained national attention. In 2010, a random tombstone appeared mysteriously in the cemetery, then vanished abruptly two years later. Have you heard of this story before? Anyone from Texas who has been to the cemetery? Let me know in the comments below. Charleville Castle Charleville Castle is one of the most mysterious historical places in all of Ireland. It's located in what little remains of the primordial oak woods once inhabited by ancient druids. It was constructed in 1798 by Charles William Bury. To this day, the castle is hands down the finest example of Gothic architecture anywhere on the island, but it's also a haunting place full of nightmares and mystery. Visitors claim to have seen a little girl wearing a blue and white dress wandering through the halls. The girl has golden curls and blue ribbons in her hair. She's sometimes seen as a shadow burned into a photograph. She's sometimes witnessed in someone's peripheral vision. According to historical records, the girl could be the youngest daughter of the third Earl of Charleville named Harriet. Harriet passed away tragically in 1861 at the young age of eight. Ever since, her presence has been felt by those who enter Charleville Castle, and sometimes you can hear her singing and laughing. Ape Canyon Ape Canyon is a huge gorge just northeast of Mount St. Helens in Washington State. It's a mysterious patch of wilderness named after a horrifying attack in 1924 by an alleged pack of Bigfoot monsters. According to the old reports, it was a summer night in July when a small cabin filled with a group of miners came under siege by what they identified as wild ape men, horrifying creatures that were big and hairy like apes, but looked just like men. All five of the miners survived the vicious attack, and each of them confessed the same story. The assault happened while they were asleep. The miners woke up to hear giant stones smashing against the walls of their wooden cabin. The stones were coming at them from all sides, 
So the men grabbed their weapons and ran outside and began shooting at monsters that they saw up in the hills. After they started shooting, the attack ceased, and when they let their guard fall, the attack began again. This went on and on until daybreak. While the apparent Bigfoot monsters never actually breached the cabin, the men did see them up at the edges of the canyon as the sun came up. They saw them clear as day, big, hairy, and ape-like. One of the men believed they had been attacked by beings from another world. However, most experts don't believe the miners were attacked by monsters, but were instead bombarded by a local group of youngsters who just appeared big and beastly and hairy in the dark. Unfortunately, after Mount St. Helens erupted in 1980, the area where the cabin once stood changed, and the exact site of the cabin has since been lost. The Ancient City of Myra The city of Myra was once a powerful port on the Mediterranean, but it was forgotten and lost in the 13th century until 2009, when it was discovered again in Turkey. It was here that a bishop named Nicholas made the city into a Christian capital in the ancient world. You might know him better as Saint Nicholas, aka Santa Claus. This ancient city goes back thousands of years, but nobody knows exactly when the city was first founded. The first mention of Myra appears in the 1st century BC as one of the cities of the Lycian League. However, historians believe it goes back at least an additional 400 years. Lycia was a region in modern Anatolia that had a great sway in ancient times. Lycia was also the first democratic union ever created and was home to many classical writers. For 800 years, it was a very important pilgrimage site in the Byzantine Empire, and they were known for their riches, art, and architecture which also made them very appealing to foreign invaders, such as the Persians, the Greeks, the Egyptians, and the Romans. Rather than submit, they banded together and formed the Lycian League, one of the first democracies in the world. It had all the cities in Lycia vote for a representative, which would then vote at a yearly council. The largest cities, including Myra, got three votes. Nicholas became an important power player in the Roman Empire, converting the Greco-Roman temples into Christian ones. He was appointed Archbishop by Emperor Constantine, and he was known for his generosity and for performing miracles, such as saving a ship from sinking and bringing a drowned sailor back to life. However, over the years, the city was plagued by invasions and disease. There were Persian attacks, Muslim raids, plagues, earthquakes, and even flash floods. By the 11th century, Myra was completely abandoned. There is not much remaining today of the amazing architecture that made Myra great. The temple of the goddess Artemis, said to be the most impressive building in the entire region, is completely gone. Though there are some ruins still standing, like the granary built by Emperor Hadrian of Rome on a visit in 131 AD, which archaeologists have studied extensively. The city was eventually covered in 18 feet of mud from the rampaging nearby river. However, thanks to new technology, it is slowly reappearing as archaeologists have found an entire chapel almost perfectly preserved. Nearby, there is another building, and another. Now it looks like the original city might be largely intact underground, and archaeologists can probably find the city under the mud just how it was like in Pompeii. Mini Pompeii Speaking of Pompeii, experts excavating an old building in the Italian city of Verona have discovered what they described as a miniature Pompeii. The building wasn't destroyed by a volcanic eruption or anything like that, but it is extremely well preserved, just like the famous city. The discovery was made in an old cinema that had been abandoned for the last two decades. While renovating the cinema, workers discovered frescoed walls underneath the modern structure that had been untouched for around 2,000 years. Archaeologists still aren't sure what kind of building the walls belong to, but it definitely dates back to the 2nd century. Judging by some structural damage, archaeologists were able to determine that the building had probably survived a vicious fire that caused its roof to collapse and then it was just kind of built over as the centuries went on. But miraculously, the colorful artwork was never damaged through any of it. There is still hope for more information to come to light as the huge site is still being excavated. No bodies have been found yet, but there is still a lot more work to go. Archaeologists are hopeful they will figure out what the mysterious structure was used for and why its walls were painted so brilliantly. Lake Huron a team of researchers from the University of Texas have recently uncovered stone tool artifacts inside Lake Huron that date back 9,000 years. And to make the discovery even more shocking, 
Many of the stone tools were crafted from obsidian, which came from a quarry over 2,000 miles away in central Oregon. As of right now, these pieces of obsidian are the oldest of their kind ever found in the continental United States. They suggest a complicated social network across North America dating back to 10,000 years ago. Whoever mined the obsidian must have traded it all the way to where a mysterious group of people were living in the Lake Huron area. Underwater archaeologists also discovered traces of a settlement at the bottom of the lake. It's believed that during the last years of the Ice Age, ancient social groups of caribou hunters had built some kind of primitive settlement here using stone walls, at a time when Lake Huron was dry as a bone. Today, these remains are 100 feet underwater. A mysterious city. In Peru, experts have discovered a brand new pre-Hispanic archaeological site near the city of Cusco, never before explored by modern scientists. The archaeologists found the leftovers of stone walls built by the Inca, the ruins of a megalithic temple, and artifacts left behind by members of the relatively unknown Wadi culture. The site is called Espiritu Pampa, according to the Decentralized Culture Directorate of Cusco. This is the state body in charge of conserving precious artifacts in the area. Archaeologists also uncovered tooth fragments from animals, a silver chest plate that may have been worn by a fearless warrior, ceramic vessels, and mysterious silver needles. They even found a silver crown and other forgotten pieces of jewelry. The most important building is the temple itself, which archaeologists believe was used by the Wadi to perform rituals or as an astronomical observatory. But what's really strange is that traces of Inca culture were also found here, suggesting centuries after the Wadi had vanished, the Inca moved into their abandoned city as they expanded throughout Peru. But just who were the Wadi? They flourished between the years 600 and 1000, and they held dominance over a huge patch of land between the rainforest and the Andean highlands. They've even been referred to as the first great empire of ancient Peru. Their capital, Fuadi, was one of the first splendid cities in the entire world. But like a lot of old civilizations back then, centuries of persistent drought saw their numbers decline, and their civilization crumbled. The Island of Havar Something strange was recently discovered on the Croatian island of Havar. Archaeologists found traces of an old Greek settlement dating to around the 4th century AD, back when the whole area was populated by Greeks, who had recently taken it back from the Romans. But the island actually has a history that stretches back much further. The island has been continually inhabited since Neolithic times, though the Greeks were the first to settle on the island back in 385 BC. The Roman Empire eventually seized control of the area in 219 BC, and 900 years later, when their power had seriously diminished in the region, Slavic people arrived and took control of the island. Basically, the island of Havar has had a long and brutal history. The recent archaeological dig took place in the gardens of a Croatian palace built here in the 17th century. Researchers were expecting to find artifacts related to the palace. What they found instead was an ancient necropolis filled with ceramic jars which themselves contained human remains. Researchers uncovered at least 20 graves in the necropolis and the skeletons of 32 people. They also found a piece of stone wall dating back about 1900 years. In typical Greek fashion, these tombs were flamboyant and exceptional. Many tombs were elaborate buildings with their own roofs and stone walls with the most impressive skeletons being buried inside giant jars, almost like a human ship in a bottle, along with many, many grave goods. King Herod's Tomb King Herod the Great ruled over Judea from between 37 BC to 4 BC and was known for his exceptional cruelty and tough rule, as well as his impressive building projects, including the fortress of Masada. He killed his sons and his wife and loved to confiscate property from those who did not support him. He is also a very important figure in the Bible. One of King Herod's most infamous acts was to murder every male baby in Bethlehem to prevent a prophecy from coming to life, in which the Messiah was to be born. There is no historical record of this happening other than what was written in the Gospel of Matthew, and nobody knows if it really happened. The search for his tomb became every archaeologist's obsession. Nobody knew where it was. By the late 1800s, finding the tomb was like searching for the Ark of the Covenant. In 1838, the American scholar Edward Robinson found Herodium, a huge fortified palace built by King Herod. The palace was discovered buried underneath a massive volcano-shaped earthen mound, only about seven miles from Jerusalem. But throughout all the original excavations, nobody could find the actual resting place of the infamous king. 
It wasn't until 2007 that archaeologists finally unearthed a huge staircase leading down to a burial site. Within the burial site, they found a sarcophagus so lavishly decorated it must have been used for a king. The story made headlines around the world, with the London Daily saying, a new discovery may solve the mystery of the Bible's bloodiest tyrant. But according to National Geographic, the tomb had already been pillaged and destroyed, probably on purpose, by rebels. It is still up for debate on whether this was actually his real tomb, since there were no carvings or engravings mentioning his name. Others are still on the lookout. Jiaha. The archaeological site of Jiaha in China has been the source of great interest recently as it contains evidence of some of the earliest people who ever lived in the Far East. Archaeologists have uncovered cultural and artistic remains such as advanced stone cutting tools, kilns and pottery, unique housing structures, and musical flutes hollowed from bone. All the evidence points to a flourishing society that was shockingly advanced as far back as the Neolithic period. This site is unique among all ancient sites in the world. One of the main reasons is just how musical the old people of Jiaha were. Some archaeological sites in Europe have yielded a single musical instrument. Here, archaeologists have found 30 flutes with six of them representing the earliest examples of usable musical instruments anywhere in the world. The flutes were crafted from the wing bones of exotic red-crowned cranes, with up to eight holes capable of producing a wide variety of unique sounds. The Met Museum reports that Chinese myths known from nearly 6,000 years after the flutes were made tell of the cosmological importance of music and the association of flute playing and cranes. Experts believe the flutes were probably used in rituals and ceremonies, and they probably sounded better than most high school recorder sessions. To make the musical accomplishments at Jiahu even more impressive, keep in mind these flutes were crafted around 9,000 years ago, roughly 4,500 years before the ancient Egyptians were even established as we know them. Big Talbot Island Excavations on Big Talbot Island in Florida have revealed traces of what could be a forgotten Native American settlement built by an extinct tribe. Researchers working with the University of North Florida believe they've uncovered the old city of Cerebe, a place originally spoken of by French and Spanish explorers in the 1560s. Dedicated historians have known about this mysterious city for a long time, but nobody has ever been able to find it. That is, until now. The archaeological team discovered a range of interesting artifacts on the island, including those of indigenous and European origins. For those not familiar with Florida, Big Talbot Island is just off the coast of Jacksonville. But just who lived on this island? It would have been a group of Native Americans known as the Mokama. They lived here during the 16th century. The ceramics found by the archaeological team date back to this time, as do the remains of smashed Spanish pottery. Judging by just how big the excavation site is, researchers say the island was much more than a small settlement and was probably a major community, at least until Europeans arrived in 1562. Less than 150 years later, the Mokama were gone, and their settlements were lost to history. Al Ula In northwestern Saudi Arabia, there is a region known as Al Ula. To the untrained eye, it looks like nothing but desert landscape, dry rocks, and mounds of dirt. But this is actually a place rich in archaeological treasures. Just recently, the remains of 11 humans and a dog were found buried inside a monumental tomb. The tomb itself dates back to 4,300 BC and was discovered thanks to satellite images and aerial photography. Because the region is so vast and inhospitable, one of the best ways for archaeologists to locate ancient sites is by using satellites and flyby missions. Over 6,000 years ago, this desert landscape was home to a village, and this village used the burial ground over a period of around 600 years. According to Melissa Kennedy, a professional researcher involved in the project, the tomb would have been clearly visible on the flat landscape as a large and prominent structure. But why exactly these people fled the desert, when they made their exodus, or if they simply died as their village turned to dust, nobody can say for sure. We don't even know what these ancient people were called. Shimao. The archaeological site of Shimao is one of the most mysterious in all of China. It was once a marvelous fortress city with six miles of high walls and a pyramid that stood 230 feet tall. Up until recently, nobody even knew this ancient city existed. 
For centuries, locals had just assumed the odd features were part of the nearby Great Wall. It wasn't until a few years ago that excavations got started, and archaeologists realized they were dealing with a complex society that predates the oldest section of the Great Wall of China by 2,000 years. The people who lived and thrived in Ximao did so 4,300 years ago, at least five centuries before the Chinese civilization had even reached the Central Plains. But just who were these people, and how is this possible? According to National Geographic, Ximao flourished for only 500 years, from between 2300 BC to 1800 BC. Then, for seemingly no reason, the city was abandoned and its people evaporated into thin air. There are absolutely no ancient texts to explain what happened here, at the biggest Neolithic settlement in all of China, a place 25% larger than Central Park in New York City. Archaeologists have found proof of human sacrifice, painted murals, artifacts crafted out of jade, and much, much more. And yet nobody knows where these people came from or where they went. Just recently, archaeologists uncovered 70 relief sculptures etched into stone depicting serpents, monsters, and unbelievable beasts that nobody can even recognize. Still, there is no clue as to what happened to Ximao or its people. The Dance Floor of John the Baptist Archaeologists claim that they have discovered the dance floor where John the Baptist was sentenced to death in the year 29 AD. St. John the Baptist was a Jewish prophet who foretold the coming of Jesus and had a circle of disciples. He preached about God's final judgment and baptized his followers, including Jesus himself. Like most saints, he was sentenced to death after he insulted King Herod Antipas, son of King Herod the Great, when he called him out for divorcing his wife and marrying his brother's wife instead. King Herod was worried about the growing influence of John the Baptist, getting people all riled up, and so according to historical records, King Herod Antipas had the man executed at an unnamed fort near the Dead Sea in what is today Jordan. However, the Bible tells a much more dramatic tale, saying that King Herod Antipas decided to kill John the Baptist because of a dance. He was about to marry his brother's wife Herodias, who had a daughter named Salome. During the king's birthday party, his future daughter performed a dance that was so beautiful and charming, he promised to give her anything she wanted. What she wanted was John the Baptist's head on a platter for insulting her mother. The king fulfilled the request, and the preacher was beheaded. Until recently, this was seen as just a story from the Bible. However, a courtyard recently uncovered at the archaeological site of Machaerus in Jordan may very well be where this fabled dance was performed. This is according to archaeologists working with a team to excavate important areas around the Dead Sea. Experts recognized one part of the courtyard as the throne of King Herod Antipas, and that was when they realized the dance floor had probably been right in front of it. The reconstruction of the site with the courtyard and the throne area next to it indicate that all the elements of the story are there. It is historically likely that the excavation has brought the dance floor of Salome to life, and this may have been where the saint was sentenced to death. Fossils in a Golden Ball Amateur archaeologist Aaron Smith discovered some very strange ancient sea creatures hiding inside of what kind of looks like the golden snitch from Harry Potter. The discovery happened on the beach in Yorkshire, when the young archaeologist uncovered a rock coated in iron pyrite, what you may know as fool's gold. The rock is so shiny and so smooth, and it looks so much like gold that at first glance it could be mistaken for a golden cannonball. Amazingly, when Smith broke the golden ball open, he was rewarded with a piece of history dated back over 185 million years. There was a cephalopod literally fossilized inside of the iron pyrite. This was a type of Clevisera fossil, with Clevisera's being an extinct type of cephalopod that lived during the Jurassic period. Because these cephalopods came with shells, they were able to be fossilized, unlike modern squids and octopuses that have no bones. Believe it or not, these kinds of discoveries are actually pretty common in the United Kingdom. Golden balls can be found mixed in with other rocks along the shore, and they almost all have fossils of extinct critters hiding inside of them. Ancient Temple of the Moon A secret passageway has been discovered underneath a sacred pyramid in the ancient Aztec city of Teotihuacan. Archaeologists say it may have been used as an entranceway into the underworld. The passage was discovered beneath the Pyramid of the Moon by scanning under the surface of the Earth using new technologies. Researchers found a cavity going all the way from beneath the pyramid to the center of the nearby plaza of the moon. 
This amazing discovery has confirmed that the ancient people who lived in this once great city dug tunnels beneath their monuments. However, it's not exactly clear what they used the tunnels for. Archaeologists, of course, have a few theories. They believe the people may have used this underground labyrinth to emulate the underworld, a place where in their mythology they believed all organic life was created. On the other hand, the tunnels may have been secret passageways for important priests to move from monument to monument without being bothered by the public. Perhaps both, since underground was a sacred space, in between the living and the dead, and the priests had the ability to be with both. As for the Pyramid of the Moon itself, construction began in the year 100 BC as nothing but a small platform where ritual ceremonies were likely carried out. It took 550 years to complete. By the year 450, it was a pyramid around 150 feet tall and filled with mysterious tunnels, often used in human sacrifices and to carry out rituals to appease the gods. Arctic Dinosaurs A research team has discovered a dinosaur nursery in the Arctic. Scientists with the University of Alaska Fairbanks learned that about 70 million years ago, the Arctic was full of dinosaurs. They found evidence of all different branches of life living in the region throughout the entire year, from small bird-like predators to larger carnivores like tyrannosaurs. Pat Drunkenmiller, who worked with the scientific team, said they now have unequivocal evidence that many dinosaurs were nesting far north in the Arctic Circle. You might be thinking to yourself that of course dinosaurs lived in the Arctic, but this wasn't actually a known fact until now. This was the first time that scientists could prove dinosaurs reproduced at higher latitudes. Previously, scientists believed dinosaurs migrated south for the winter to warmer weather, just like birds do today. But they didn't. Dinosaurs laid eggs in the Arctic and then hung around all year. The scientists uncovered fossilized evidence of what they described as a giant prehistoric maternity ward, with fragments of bones and teeth, many of them no larger than a needle. These bones were left over from hordes of prehistoric dino babies. Amazingly, the only way scientists could analyze these itty-bitty little bones was by scooping buckets of sediment from cliffs and then running the material through tiny screens to remove rocks and soil until all they had left were almost microscopic baby dinosaur bones. They don't know every last species that lived here in the Arctic, but there were definitely a lot. Iron Age Plastics Archaeologists have made a weird ancient discovery involving plastic. Most of us are pretty aware by now that plastic has perforated every last inch of the Earth. And now, it seems to be sweeping into archaeological sites as well. In the Iron Age village of Castle Henless, where a small community thrived in what is today Wales about 2,000 years ago, researchers have found thousands of pieces of plastic. Here's how it happened. The historical town was reconstructed by archaeologists and researchers using the exact same materials that the villagers used back during the Iron Age. It's one of the coolest archaeological sites anywhere in Wales, hidden in the rolling hills and lush greenery of the countryside. It's been open to the public for 35 years and is one of the top destinations for local school trips. Then in 2018 and 2019, some of the old houses needed to be replaced. This was when the plastic was found. Despite the archaeological site being incredibly well-maintained and constantly cleaned, there was plastic everywhere. Researchers were shocked by the sheer amount. This site should have been immaculate. It's not like people were throwing plastic trash all over the ground. And still, researchers uncovered thousands of scraps of plastic, suggesting that everywhere else on the planet is way, way worse. Prehistoric Seal While exploring the ruins of a prehistoric settlement in Israel, archaeologists discovered an old clay seal dating back 7,000 years that predates the art of writing. This seal comes from before Israel ever entered the Bronze Age. The seal, which is a type of stamp, looks oddly like stamps that are still used today. There were actually 150 clay seals found at the archaeological site of Tel Saf, but this particular one stood out to the researchers, who called it a rare find of great historical value. But just what on earth could a clay seal have been used for 7,000 years ago, and before Israel even developed the written word? It's not like people were sending letters in the post. These types of seals were used to mark cargo, silos, and even barns. Believe it or not, these seals were often used as a kind of anti-theft system. For example, a farmer would stamp the seal over a closed barn door, and if that seal was broken when they returned, it meant someone had snuck into the barn. They would do the same thing for shipments. 
If a shipment arrived and the seal of a particular piece of cargo was broken, it would mean someone had opened that cargo and possibly stolen something. These types of seals are still used today for securing letters, documents, and yes, cargo. Mysterious Spanish Tombs In Spain, archaeologists have unearthed a collection of mysterious tombs in an even more mysterious Islamic necropolis. Over 4,500 bodies have been uncovered, pulled from at least 400 tombs in a new archaeological site that spans five acres. The burial ground dates back to the 8th century and was found near the modern town of Zaragoza. The history of the area is bloody and brutal. Around the year 711, Arab forces had already begun to conquer the area. They remained in Spain until 1492, when the Catholic kings Ferdinand and Isabella recaptured Spain and forced the Muslims out. This cemetery was used to bury bodies of the Islamic forces who occupied the area for all of those centuries. There has been a fair bit of historical debate surrounding the Islamic occupation of the region, but this new discovery washes away any doubt that the people didn't live here in large numbers. Each body buried in the necropolis was done so according to the Islamic customs. This mostly means the body was always facing southeast toward Mecca. Archaeologist Eva Jimenez, who has been working closely with the project, told CNN that the discovery proves the Islamic presence in Spain was more serious than previously thought. There was obviously a large Muslim population here for centuries. The Megalodon At a construction site in Somerville, South Carolina, fossil hunter Matthew Basak discovered the tooth of a prehistoric shark monster. Amazingly, the tooth wasn't even that hard to find. Matthew discovered the ancient tooth sticking out the side of a drainage ditch. He had been visiting the site specifically to look for fossils, and he hit the jackpot. Underneath the first tooth, he found a second, and according to Matthew, it was the second largest tooth he had ever seen. And this guy is a professional fossil hunter. See? One man's construction site is another's gold mine. But just what kind of animal did the teeth belong to? It was of course a megalodon, the biggest and most dangerous shark that ever lived. To give you a rough idea of how huge this megalithic monster was, its tooth weighed about three pounds and measured almost six and a half inches. The tooth would overlap an ordinary person's hand. And it's not like the megalodon only had one tooth either. Its mouth was full of them, which is not surprising seeing as the giant shark could reach incredible lengths of over 60 feet. The megalodon was the biggest fish to ever live gobbling up an estimated 2,500 pounds of food every day before it went extinct around 3.6 million years ago. All that eating took a whole lot of sharp teeth. As for Matthew, he added the new megalodon teeth to his fossil collection, which contains at least 250 other teeth from these great sharks. He said, the shark gods were with me. San Qing Dui Discoveries Archaeologists in China have been unearthing hundreds of bizarre and mysterious artifacts from what may just be the most important site in China. The archaeological site is the ancient city of San Qingdui, dating back over 3,000 years. The National Cultural Heritage Administration says archaeologists have found over 500 priceless relics in recent months, including fragments from a creepy bronze mask and plenty of weird figurines crafted from ivory and jade. The site is so big that excavations have been going on for the last three decades. There is even a museum nearby where all the best artifacts are put on display. Despite so many excavations and so much archaeological attention, there still isn't much known about the mysterious Sanxingdui civilization. We know it was the largest centralized city anywhere in the region of what is today the Sichuan province. It dates back to around 2000 BC, and researchers have also discovered evidence that the city was once protected by huge walls. Some researchers claim the civilization had direct ties to the origin of Chinese culture. Others even say the people here may have been visited by extraterrestrials based on curious figurines crafted in the likeness of inhuman, alien-looking creatures. Of course, none of these theories have been proven. The most recent discovery came in the form of six giant sacrificial pits that had probably been used in an unknown religious ceremony. Humans were sacrificed, possibly to a strange deity, and their remains were tossed into holes in the ground. An Ancient Massacre Speaking of sacrificial pits, a murder hole was recently discovered in eastern Croatia. The hole dates back 6,200 years. Within the hole, archaeologists found a group of 41 men, women, and children who had been brutally attacked and then dumped into a mass grave. 
At first, experts believed the victims were from World War II, perhaps casualties of the war or a village that had been wiped out during the 1990s Balkan conflict. It wasn't until researchers realized there were no bullets or even bullet holes that they knew the bodies were ancient. It helped that they also found fragments of old pottery to date the corpses. The next guess was that the victims had been part of a single community that had been targeted for total annihilation for unknown reasons. However, after doing a complete DNA analysis of the victims, what happened to be the largest genetic study of a mass killing in history, researchers learned the victims weren't even related. Even after the investigation, researchers never answered the question of who these people were, why they were killed, or who exactly did the killing. The lead author of the study, archaeologist Mario Novak, called it a mystery that will probably never be solved. Thanks for watching! Remember to subscribe if you haven't already, and be sure to give this video a thumbs up to let me know you want to see more like these. See you later! Bye!